It is the most spooky time of the year, which means it's time for the most terrifying creepypastas of all time. Of the Pokemon variety, of course. Welcome back, my fellow gamers. It's me, Amanda, although today I am an elf queen, so enjoy that. I don't need a crown if you're wondering where it is. Everyone just knows that I'm royal. I have little earrings on. That's how I know I'm royal. Which Pokemon do you think is the most frightening? And which do you think that you'd actually be BFFs with? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Lavender Town Syndrome. Of course, what would this list be without one of the most all time famous creepypastas, Lavender Town Syndrome. Lavender Town Syndrome is so prevalent in Pokemon rumor circles that I actually thought it was based on some kind of like facts or a true story when I first heard about it. That's how real and creepily plausible it felt to me. While not real, it is still super disturbing. The idea here is that Lavender Town Syndrome in this creepypasta is a mental defect basically or a mental illness that one could catch after being exposed to the original tones of the Lavender Town theme. Now those who suffered from the syndrome would become depressed, with it being reported that hundreds or thousands of them even took their own lives. These reports of course were false because it's not a real thing, but still it's super creepy. And friends, before we move on to this next spot on our list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming, why not show us you love it and show us your love for creepypastas by hitting the like button on this video so we can give you more creepypastas. Number nine, bad Pokemon. Everyone thought that my Squirtle was the most well-behaved Pokemon ever, and it was because of this that I was punished. Squirtle, of course, could do no harm. Squirtle was cute, Squirtle was helpful, Squirtle only wanted what was best for me. My friends, my parents, that's what everyone said. But what they didn't know was that it was Squirtle, not me, that drowned the Rattatas and laid them out to rot in the boiling sun on our lawn. It was Squirtle, not me, that emptied the gas tank in Dad's car and replaced it with water. It was Squirtle, not me, that wrote that note warning of the harm that would come to the neighbors if I wasn't locked away. But now I am locked away while Squirtle is inside my home, eating my food, sleeping in my bed, perfect, sweet, harmless Squirtle. Number eight, Ash's Coma. This is a long one, so time for a summary. I'll summarize it as best I can. What if in Pokemon, everything wasn't as it first appears? What if Ash wasn't on a journey to become the best Pokemon trainer of all time, a Pokemon master? What if he was actually comatose? That is the theory this creepypasta poses. With each friend and ally, each enemy, each gym leader, and every every Pokemon representing a different aspect of Ash, who moves through a much more idyllic world in comparison to the real one. Unaware he is in a coma, there are parts of him that try to wake him up and make him see the truth of his situation, while other parts still attempt to maintain the fantasy world of his dreams, wanting to continue there and there alone. Eventually Ash does wake up but too late, dying without ever having truly lived, only realizing the truth of his situation as he lays there breathing his last. However, winding back the clock, there also exists in this multiversal story a reality where Ash does wake up before being taken off life support and manages to recover and live. In fact, this version sees him begin his own adventures in the real world, a darker one than his dreams and without any of the cast of characters and friends he has known for years in his coma that never existed, but a world where he can finally venture out. Number 7, Another Soul Has Been Claimed, Part 1. This creepypasta is only signed H, so I that is all I can credit it to. And even then, the person writing it might not have been the original writer as it was sourced as having an origin elsewhere, so forgive me if I'm not giving you the original author there with H. However, that is the way with creepypastas, isn't it? As they are all basically passed around, so lots of different versions and lots of different people claiming to have written them. This is also a long one, so I'll be sharing it over the course of multiple points. So make sure you stay tuned to hear the whole story. You're gonna want it with this one because this one's pretty creepy. Zach got the best gift for his birthday. While he'd received a lot of great gifts, this one took the cake. It was from his father and was a black Pokemon game. Excited, Zach put it straight into his DS and got to playing before bed. The hour was growing late eventually and Zach thought about saving the game and shutting down his DS when he saw a Pokeball on the ground in game. 
game. He decided to pick it up and noticed that within it was a haunter that was somehow designated as being level infinity. The haunter had a full meter that instead of being labeled as EXP experience was marked SLS. Using the haunter would diminish the SLS stat and seem to petrify his opponents, with a message coming up after he defeated his opposing Pokemon that read, another soul has been claimed. Number 6. Hypno's Lullaby Hypno's Lullaby is a creepypasta based around the story of how Hypno is a dangerous and deadly Pokemon that will basically lull you into a false sense of security before murdering you. Well, usually it kidnaps you, then it murders you, but yeah. The real wild thing about Hypno's Lullaby is that it actually is kind of backed up by in-game evidence, including a time where you, in-game, have to help save a girl from being hypnotized by a Hypno. Not only that, but Hypnos are known for actually kidnapping people in the lore of the game, so yeah. There exists a ROM hack too, where you are also forced to go into Berry Forest, a home for the Hypnos, where you become lost, trapped, and must face death pretty much around every corner. And then of course there is also the fan-made theme known as Hypnos Lullaby, which is what we're really talking about here. If you haven't heard the lullaby, it is super disturbing. It's supposed to be the song that Hypno sings to lure its victims away, and is of course inspired by this creepypasta. And it's said to the melody of Lavender Town for added creepy effect, which is just, it's just great. Number 5. Another Soul Has Been Claimed Part 2 Tired and frightened of his experiences with Haunter in game, Zack attempted to turn off his DS. But when he found that his DS was unresponsive, he decided to lob it against the wall, terrified. It smashed, and he cried, but not willing to go near it, he just decided to fall asleep. In the middle of the night, however, he awoke, screaming from a night terror. He had dreamed the Haunter had come to life and got him. When he went to the bathroom, his nose was bleeding, and Zack observed so were his ears and his eyes. After cleaning up, Zack looked into the mirror only to see the twisted face of the haunter gazing back at him. Look into my eyes, master, it said with a horrible low and garbled voice, and witness the last thing you'll ever see. It smiled. Oblivion. Number 4. Pokemon Black Another Soul Has Been Claimed isn't the only Pokemon creepypasta to focus on the infamous Pokemon Black game. This one is solely forgive the pun, about the experience of playing this game and things that you actually might experience were you to play it. Case in point, a haunter that becomes more creepy the more you see it, that attacks not just opposing Pokemon, but trainers, turning them into tombstones upon defeating them, and that also tends to scream a lot. In the end, it's said you can use the haunter in the hacked Pokemon Black game to curse the world after defeating the Elite Four. Beating them with haunter will result in a cutscene which supposedly takes place years in the future. In this bleak future reality, every NPC is replaced by a tombstone. And old and feeble, you are forced to face the only other survivor in this world. The same haunter that doomed everyone that was once your Pokemon years ago. As the old man version of yourself when you go into this battle, the only move you have is struggle. Eventually, the haunter will use curse on you one final time, and after the screen fades to black, the player will notice that their save file has been erased. Number 3. Another Soul Has Been Claimed Part 3 When Zack's mom got home from work early the next morning, the house was a mess. The furniture was tossed and smashed, and she worried that a break-in had happened while she was at work. As she searched for her family in the house, she found her husband, Zack's father, mortally wounded on the couch and near death. He warned her not to go upstairs, but in a frenzy, she resisted his advice. Calling the cops, she went upstairs to her son's room. It was empty. Zack was nowhere to be found. Something wet dripped onto her shoulder. She touched it, rubbing it between her fingers. Blood. She looked up and screamed. Number 2. Be careful what you wish for My mom once told me that wishing on a shooting star would make all your dreams come true. One day I did just that. As I saw the star fly over me at night, I wished really hard. What did I wish for? If I told you, it wouldn't have come true. And well, maybe I should have told you. I never thought this would happen. I forgot this was even a Pokemon ability. I can't stop shedding my skin. Number 1. Another Soul Has Been Claimed Part 4 The Final Part By the time the police came, Zack's father was dead. They found another person in the home, at least 
they thought it was a person. It was so mutilated they couldn't make out who it had been in life. Venturing upstairs, the sight in Zack's room caused them all to run out into the hall, vomiting. Zack's body was there, hanging, missing eyes and with his back torn open. There was a note on his body that fell to the floor as they bent over, sick to their stomachs. It landed in a pool of blood and black ooze. The message written on it in human blood read, another soul has been claimed. That's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed this horrifyingly good creepy pasta list and did not get um, too scared. I'll see you next time, but until then, keep on gaming on. Pew pew!